But I love recording that. Recording is on. Oh, there we go. All right, so it's recording. I can upload it afterwards. <clears throat> okay, well, that'll work. Uh, we want to bring something back from. Oh, wow, it has a recording in the corner. That's cool. That is awesome. Where does it store it, or is it using? It's, do you have it's to uploading it to issues? Dropbox. I have to I have to sign in and delete a bunch of stuff because it's going to run out of space in like two minutes. So <laughs> give me just a moment so I can empty some space. But this is awesome. So there's like this recording button on the two, three dot more actions thing in Jitsi. It just is a great fallback. Thank you, Bowen. No problem. Okay, well, we can start this meeting, and we're going to start off with something that we used to do all the time, but we haven't been doing it lately. Uh, is, uh, just a quick update on what you're doing. This will be our check-in round. So it's, what did you do last week? Are you distracted by anything? And what are your intentions for the meeting? So three things, and the first one's huge, right? So... Uh, I might need a second to compose my thoughts. Does anyone else want to start? Um, okay, so to clarify, it's what do we do in the, in the past few weeks now? Yep. And intentions and distractions? Yep. This is adorable. <laughs> this is adorable. <laughs> okay. You did a lot, yeah. Well, we've got some okay, back 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 Oh, oh, were you talking to me? I'm sorry. I'm still trying to clean out my Dropbox, so this records. Can we <laughs> no, go? Can okay. we go to somebody else for the moment? No, no. I just you had this, you this had. Uh, so last this past week, I have been um, working on a lot of hiring stuff for the Argon PhD. We interviewed some new people. Um, I have been keeping up with uh, unicorns uh, pledges that are in the, in the process of applying to the unicorn VAC. Um and I ogled over Kai's new baby, and um, I'm also uh, continuing to facilitate the conflict. And um, that's all that I need to talk about now. Oh, and, and Lance Kuhl and I are uh, working on this Unicorn DAC article to be published. I'm excited about. And um, my intentions for this meeting are to just tie up um, the Michael and Jeff proposals now that we went through the last step that we need. And, um, and that's it. I am not too distracted, but I have a little Okay, and I'll pass it to Danny. Danny. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yay. Okay, um, this past week I have been dividing my time between a lot of the use case onboarding and testing for the DAP and the reward DAO, contributor communications and wall of fame games and trying to learn how to get milestones going there. Also played with a CRM uh, demo and would like to get that going really soon. Uh, distractions. Uh, I don't really have any distractions here in particular other than just I have a lot of things I want to work on and it's hard to decide which thing to do next. So priorities uh, is my distraction. And I'll pass it to Michael. Here, just unmute. So the last week I've been doing a lot of uh, bilateral meetings, uh, mostly with Jeff and Chris and Wojtek and Danny and Quasia, RJ, Griff and Loi, uh, just getting up to speed with all the different intricacies and also spending some time looking through the Giveth existing DAP and understanding the workflow and how that all functions and a little bit around the Aragon uh, DAO. Also uh, <clears throat> put in the roles this week, of course, and um, 
Also, I put in this event into the as an issue into the communication section. This is an existing event, but uh, trying to pull that into the Giveth ecosystem. It's an event next February. Um, distracted this week. Uh, well, earlier this week, I had a cold, and uh, I'm pretty much over it now, although my voice is still a little funny. And going forward, uh, my main focus now is to build the roadmap for this project. And actually, even before that, um, I want to have I want to have the cases clearly defined uh, even before the roadmap. So we have you know three or four solid use cases for how we plan to do the DAOification of the DAP. And, and I'll pass to uh, uh, Jeff again. Okay, uh, so starting with um, last week's work. So it's been a lot of uh, idea organization. Um, I got deep into uh, some more diagrams. I know Griff loves all those diagrams. Um, also working out some software to turn those into uh, a digital format so we can start dropping them into the uh, product specification, which is uh, coming along very rough around the edges still, but I hope to have something to share uh, by hopefully either the end of today or tomorrow um, and just get some further uh, refinement going in that. Um, I've also been doing a lot of kind of like offshoot research, looking at what IXO is doing um, and Michael just brought up another project uh, to my knowledge and it sounds like they're doing some very related things. So I think there are some good, cool um, uh, other knowledge bases that we can be pulling from when we're putting this together. Um, distractions for this week, uh, I'm feeling pretty caught up actually. I've I had a lot of uh, little things to catch up on once getting home, but um, feeling much more focused on getting this uh, product specification out. Um, intentions for the rest of the week or for the upcoming week. Um, I have my first meeting with Zargam tomorrow. Um, I have some very like focused questions for him as far as specific implementations of uh, his ideas into our project um, and see how that can move forward. I'm hoping to have that product specification over to you, Griff, and uh, would also really appreciate uh, Michael's eyes on it. And I definitely plan on bringing uh, Quasia, Luke, and the others in. Um, I guess as as uh, schedule permits, and um, yeah, I think that's that's everything. So I will pass it on to uh, Don Adams. Are you here? Hey Jeff. Hi. Sorry, go ahead. It's it's actually intentions and distractions for this meeting, rather than like okay, we can work. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, feeling focused. Cool. Nice. Hello, everybody. Uh, Don Adams here. Let's see. Um, this past week, I uh, started on a sort of announcement about the uh, DAPs and work with. I'm sorry, it's very loud here. I'm going to try to move to a less noisy place. Um, the DAPs work with RSK. Um, let's see. Distractions are, I think, like Jeff said, less and less now that I've been back in town for a while. Um, got several other writing projects going on concurrently, so I'm a bit distracted because of that, but uh, not as bad as last week or the week before. And intentions for today's meeting, I mean, to be honest, uh, I've never actually been to a roles meeting before, so I'm interested in seeing how this governance meeting differs from the roles meeting that uh, comes directly after. And I think... I think Scott Trippreneur might be the only one who we haven't heard from yet. I don't know. If we, yeah. I, I also didn't check in. But... Sorry. So I guess I'll take this opportunity. Good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm distracted by there actually being people in the room with me today. Um, but other than that, uh, I guess my intentions are to have a an awesome gov meeting and to have enough time to make a cup of coffee before the rolls meeting. Uh, and I guess with that, I will pass it back to Griff. I haven't gone and I don't think Scott or Kai have either. So, but uh, yeah, so this week, always a lot of stuff on my plate, uh, working a lot. So outside of give it, did a lot of ident three stuff. We're pushing the first use case there, right about identity so we can avoid plutocracy for Dallas. 
And so I'm sure ID3 will be valuable for Giveth as well once we push it through. Uh, and we're going over the first use case and had a meeting with an exchange to like figure out a solution with them. So that'll be cool. And then uh, we're in the first sprint for Tenagraph and we should have a website going through. Uh, it sounds like we're really close on the podcast. Uh, what's that Bowen's working on? With Josh and those guys. So, uh, and I had a, uh, I had to get like a domain name for them uh, on a .dot f domain. Uh, Argon, the Argon DAC is pushing forward. There, we had a really good interview with uh, Raphael, who ho hopefully, if things go well, he's at least our best candidate so far for a lead position there. So that's that's really promising. And we had a few other interviews. We ha I think we're going to hire a college student who's going to do part-time UI and uh, also probably in say no to someone else. Um, but yeah, and they have uh, if you have any ANT tokens right now, you can vote on the first uh, governance proposal, like uh, which is like ratifying the the rules for using getting money out of the Aragon multisig. So that's kind of interesting. So if you want to participate in a governance uh, thing with ANT tokens, you can uh, go play around. Uh, let's see, what else? And then within Giveth, I uh, had lots of chats with Jeff about our dream DAO that we're trying to build, right? Uh, and talked with Amir about it too, and a few other, Amir Taki and a few other people uh, went on, did a show last night. I think it should probably come up today with uh, Heidi from Crypto Tips and actually, uh, talked about our Ponzi scheme there. No, I didn't call it that. I didn't call it that. I mentioned kind of, but I didn't call it that. Uh, and so, uh, uh, actually, I'm going to have another show with her tonight. Uh, I did a lot of reviewing of the granting docs, and uh, the granting campaign is pushing forward with Yaler and Parker. Uh, we I tested Deem's video uploader, which uh, still needs a little bit of work, but pretty soon we'll have milestones, so you can just make a video, and boom, it's on the DAP. I uh, had lots of chats with Michael and Jeff about roles, and uh, I'm sure I did a bunch of other things too, but uh, mostly just like quick little things and helping everybody else do what they want to do. I'll pass it to Kai. Did you say your intentions? Oh, my intentions. My intentions uh, is to have a fun fireside chat, and I am only distracted by the rain outside. Uh, Kai. Wow, man, you sure as hell did a lot this week. Uh, let's see. So <clears throat> I did some stuff. Uh, so I had a look at how to make an Aragon DAO from start to finish uh, for Unicorn DAC, which I'll probably talk about at the Rose meeting later. If I can go, like there's an uh, there's a doctor coming. So I have to, yeah, just saying. Um, um, I brought like the colony guys to a social coding meeting uh, to discuss uh, social coding as a colony once they go live uh, in December. Um, I researched uh, some CRMs for Dani and seems like we settled on one and just waiting for the go to uh, make that happen so everybody can use a CRM within Giveth or like Dani is the master, I'm just a facilitator. Um, I added item three to the Galaxy website, and also, like, if you can think of any other projects that should be in our Galaxy little uh, in that section, just shoot me a message. Um, I help bring um, kind of like my own project address to mainnet. It's a little thing we started at Crypto Life Hackathon. It's live under address.space. Yeah, no users yet, but you can be the first ones. Um, I helped deliver a baby, and I facilitated the blockchain bounty, blockchain ship bounty payout, and I made a campaign for Lydia. And I'm distracted by aforementioned baby and making chicken soup. And my intentions for this meeting are just to hear more from uh, Michael. A bit, because I don't know him so much, uh, so well yet, and uh, from Jeff, who I know better. Uh, thanks, and I'll give it to, is there somebody left? Danny? 
Gotcha mm-hmm. Muir, actually, if he wants to jump in. Sure, I'll just say a couple words. I'm here, uh, been a big fan of you guys watching a little bit from the sidelines and just wanted to get a little bit more involved and kind of sneak into one of these calls and seemed like a good one to catch a little bit of the chat for. I've been uh, around the maker community for a while and big fan of the Aragon. So I made a Aragon uh, DAO uh, last week after they launched. Um, And that's all I got, I guess. Nice. Any intentions? Uh, and are you distracted at all? Um, I intend to get more involved with um, either coding or, or helping and facilitate in some capacity. Uh, using a little bit of Python and uh, learning more JavaScript. Uh, distracted by my family's coming to town this uh, this weekend, so we're gonna go to a football game. So nice. Cool. Okay. Uh, well. This meeting is, so we did, that That was our check-in, and now uh, we don't really have anything huge uh, on the Lumio docket, so I just want to give space for Q&A, like popcorn Q&A for Jeff and Michael, if anyone has any questions for them, and uh, if we have time at the end, we'll just do a fireside chat. Well, and maybe we can just make the announcement for those who haven't seen it, both Michael and Jeff did put all of their roles in the roles sheet. Last week, that was the only um, amendment to the proposal was that as long as they both did that, then um, they could be accepted in and start getting paid. So that has happened. Griff and I have both looked at their roles a lot, helped them fill out the sheet. Um, yeah, so that's, that's cool. What has happened? Yeah. <laughs> so assuming there's no objections, they are part of the team. So that's cool. But any, uh, yeah, uh, any questions for Jeff and Michael? Nothing. <laughs> Blank. Hey guys, I, I uh, don't want to speak. Uh, well, you know, I have to admit I haven't read the newest entries on the uh, sheet. I'm looking for them now. But Jeff, I, I, I read through um, that that blog post of yours uh, in the last couple of days, um, and I, I found it really interesting, um, you know, some of the ideas that you were covering in there. Uh, I was wondering if you, uh, you know, and, you know, I apologize if I'm making you repeat something that you already put in the roll sheet, but um, if you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how those ideas will be uh, experimented with or brought into play uh, at Giveth. For sure. Um, So right now I've been working on kind of uh, specking out the different modules that uh, fit into that. So, I mean, there were a lot of topics covered in that blog post and I'm trying to uh, make them a little bit more uh, clear what, um, and and the spec that's going to be written, I mean, a lot of the the work that's going to go into it is, you know, things around identity. There's going to be a lot of uh, future box um, applications, you know, when, when we have an identity solution, we can do this when we have, um, uh, what are some other missing blocks here? You know, a reputation solution. There's going to be, there's going to be a few things. We're kind of looking at building an MVP. Um, so, uh, the first module we'll need is, you know, a token bonding curve. Um, there are a few projects working on that now. Um, we're not going to, you know, draw out concretely what we need, but, um, you know, kind of specking out the the um, the basic functionality that we're looking for, and then also planning uh, for further research. And that doesn't have to come from us; that can come from the block science team, uh, whatever the case may be. But really, what I'm trying to do right now is is uh, spec out these modules. So we have a token bonding curve module. Uh, we have this curation market module using this con- continuous conviction voting, which again is something that's fairly new uh, to the space and um, uh, it has a lot of promise, but it's not quite a working uh, primitive yet. So, so some of these things we're kind of specking out and putting it out there that, you know, this is how it could work. This is how it should work. The technology today is here and this is where we want to be, but it's kind of building those um, very fuzzy modules that we can get a little bit more refined over the coming weeks and months. Um, and when hopefully we can have a, an MVP to, to drop those into and continue to refine that as we as we move forward. Um, so on the role sheet, um, there's a, a role for me as the product owner for what I just kind of 
came up with a quick name, the Curation Market DAO. Um, definitely working on some uh, some better names for that, something a little more catchy, something a little more explanatory of, of what it's doing. Um, but that's also a, a future conversation, trying to separate you know, the, the Aragon mm -hmm. DAC, the community of people involved with the product that that community will be using, um, which right now we just kind of slapped on Curation Market DAO um, but uh, definitely some more conversations coming to to make that a little bit more uh, marketable. Does that answer your question? Yeah, totally. Very cool. Um, so I, I guess just a super quick follow up. It sounds like it's a little premature to start uh, looking at or inviting in specific use cases. Or have you, have you had like thoughts and feelings about who who might be? I mean, I I know you kind of talk about. Um, you know, a trash pickup program in your blog posts and stuff. Uh, are there others that, you know, just out of curiosity, it's, it's kind of exciting stuff, so. Um, the, the core idea around this, I think, is using token bonding to allow, uh, it's kind of a, a continuous token generation model so that you can have a currency and therefore an economy around any idea. And this is really what um, Simon first kind of conceptualized these like hashtag markets. And he used Dogecoin as an example. You know, it's a community that came together around a meme and there is hundreds of millions of dollars of value in that. Why? Because it has that, you know, mimetic value. People think it's funny or whatever. Well, we can really leverage that same economy for a cause you could have a cause global warming you could cause clean up beaches you could have a cause you know almost anything how's the homeless uh, feed the poor you know you can have these causes and you can create uh an economy around that cause that can have these kind of like feedback loops that if you know the especially with the token bonding curve the more tokens in supply uh the higher the value and therefore the more resources to to feed back into that project to to carry out whatever campaigns will see the resolution of that and it's not really setting you know a specific resolution uh you know let's clean all beaches in thailand but more enabling uh a community to come together with the profit motive to emergently create campaigns to you know resolve the issue in their locality so it's not it's not pushing like a, a top down this is how we have to do things it's creating a, an ecosystem and an economy that will incentivize people to use their own uh, you know resources and and local knowledge to come into a community and, and resolve problems so I mean that's ultimately what we're looking for. Um, I mean, that's that's a very large use case. So I think we're like, you know, by use of example, we're sticking with something a little simpler or something a little more measurable, like trash cleanup. Um, we've gone through a couple of different examples and I think we still need to flesh out like our, you know, specification by example so that we're not talking abstract. We're talking, you know, this is what we can do with this in one case, but ideally we're building it for any use case that can that can create a this economy around any cause which i think is the the real power of the idea um, but kind of starting with that first use case and then moving from there um, at some point in the future once we get all these things working that's yeah that's totally awesome um i i'd love to ask one more thing i don't want to take up everybody's time how does everyone feel about a follow-up question is that uh, um yeah, what, you, you just touched on something that reminded me of something else in the post that stuck out to me, which was that, um, you know, this is a way to potentially, you know, because everyone's kind of pushing at it, there's not really a, as centralized of a control, control structure. It's kind of a way for um, problems to be solved rather than the organization exists because the problem exists and the organization doesn't want to go out of existence. Is there, I mean, it, you know, on the one hand, that's great because it means like people would have a shot at actually solving problems permanently. On the other hand, um, the the employment or whatever that gets created is sort of temporary, right? Is there any way to streamline like people basically who are working on projects that are scaling down, getting kind of sucked into other ones that are scaling up? Like, has that has that been thought about? Or I think that's um, that's somewhere that not enough people have been focusing attention. Too many people are looking at, you know, when everybody's back into the token bonding curve, okay, there's more liquidity, everything's happening. Um, of course, 
if you if you build it with you know a quadratic a Ponzi scheme curve, then you're also incentivizing people to get out as quickly as possible. And that's something you know we we speculation is a useful tool because it provides liquidity for a project and it also provides value signaling for what people think is important. Um, however, we need to be really careful in designing these curves that we're not encouraging a race to the exit. Uh, you know, when as soon as a project hits peak, everybody wants to sell, everybody wants to make money, and all of a sudden this project that's really important has no funds and resources to, to carry out its goals. So we have to be really careful looking at the, the exit strategy. Um, however, yeah, I, I do think that there's, there's power in, you know, kind of disintermediating the charity model and turning it into a gig economy. So, you know, ideally people could, um, you know, spend part of their day cleaning beaches if that was important to them and part of their day, um, you know, giving homes to the homeless and part of their day, they, in, in, if this could scale, um, you know, you could have a bunch of gig economies surrounding all of the causes that are most important to you. And by participating in those communities, you are earning those communities tokens, you are participating in governance in those communities, you're kind of turning it into uh, a gig around your, you know, your, your biggest um, causes you want to see resolved in the world. So in terms of like removing employment, uh, yes, I, I, I think employment is like in the medium long term kind of overrated. Yes, we all need to make money, but eventually, you know, with these networks of value where you are participating in causes and being reimbursed by your community for helping carry out those causes. Um, and that could be multiple at once, you know, in some kind of um, future gig economy. Um, and I forget what the original question is that I was answering. I think you, I think you pretty much got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Any other questions for me or Michael? Well, yeah, I mean, I, if no one else has any, I have a, I have a crazy one for Michael. So it's a tough one. Jeff gets the fun ones. Uh, so you I, know, like, there's a, I like crazy yeah. questions. <laughs> How do we, what is, what do you think the approach is to, to manage the DAP team has one roadmap, the Give It DAP has a roadmap, Jeff has a roadmap. You know, how are we going to manage all of the Argon DAC has a roadmap? How do you think we're going to try to keep it aligned? You know, how do we, what's the, how do you think we're going to do that? So, yeah, and I've talked to everybody about that very issue. I'm, I'm less worried with Jeff um, because I think, uh, I think Jeff and I have talked about the roadmap and how, and we're looking at different, models and Chris actually gave uh, gave me some feedback on some of the things that Swarm City had done in terms of putting together a roadmap. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, one of the things I want to make sure that we have is is just understanding the dependency. So so my thinking is think building this out over a six month period in terms of what we want to accomplish, what are the milestones we want to achieve? Um, and and you know some of those milestones might be the Aragon meeting at the end of January. And then looking, uh, I think Jeff and I will be working very closely together to make sure that those are in alignment. Likewise, Danny and I have also been talking about, uh, you know, what's happening with uh, Voitech and and their efforts. And and so I'm actually because um, you know that it's actually the Giveth one that I was a little bit more worried about at first, <clears throat> but I'm not anymore because I think knowing that we're going to keep the repository in the same place. Uh, and, and then what I want to do is actually streamline those issues that are, that are in there. So there's a lot of, I think a lot of people, I think yourself too, have added a lot of issues recently in the last week or so. Once we have that in a roadmap, we can prioritize those issues and just make sure that there's some common commonalities. I think we're going to discover that there's things that the giveth, DAP Voitech team are working on that are going to be important for the DAOification of the DAP and highlight those ones in, in terms of making sure that there's a mutual consensus. Now, in some cases, there may be things that we might need <clears throat> that 
doesn't necessarily align with uh, with Voitex and, and what their plan is. And I'm hoping that we generate kind of a mutual level of um, engagement so that in a sense, we're, we're helping them <clears throat> and they're helping us. And I don't see, and I've talked to Danny quite a bit about this yesterday. And I think uh, between Danny and I, I think we're pretty confident that we're going to avoid any issues in terms of misalignments uh, along that way. And so Danny, Danny is also going to act as that kind of bridge between um, sort of the external flow and the internal flow. And we're going to work very closely together. And I, so I, I think I'll be also chiming in a little bit on the external roadmap and making sure that that's not going off in a crazy direction that doesn't kind of leave us behind or leave us in an awkward position. But I think as long as we have good communication, and right now I think we really do, um, I don't see any issues there. I don't know, Danny, if you wanted to add to that in any way. Oh, you're on. You're muted. muted. You're you're still muted. Strangely, yeah, I see that you, it doesn't look like you're muted, but for some reason your sound isn't coming through. You may need to disconnect and reconnect. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe Danny, maybe Danny, you can chime in. Uh, we can go back to that if there's something to to add. Sorry, you can try again. Okay, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to let people know it. It seems like some people were confused and thought there was a roles meeting tonight. There is not. It's once a month, and it's it's for next week after the Gov meeting that we voted a uh, roles meeting. That's uh, Thanksgiving, right? Oh, haha. you celebrate that? <laughs> Come on, it'll be at like 10 a.m. Yeah, if I haven't started cooking already, I'll be there. I mean, you can you can cook and, and keep us on Jitsi, right? That's what Kai's doing. Yeah, exactly. This is Kai every, every week, every meeting. <laughs> With a baby in his arms, OK? Yeah. Come on, Don Adams. Now I expect you to get your baby roommate in your arms while you're cooking. You would love that, but she is off limits for streaming channels. I'm sorry. Oh, that's uh, maybe scary. after the stream. Nice, dude. Uh, By the way, congratulations, Kai. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kai, you know, we have a kind of an empty spot. Do you have questions for Michael? Oh, you're muted. He, sh he shook his head no. Oh, he said no. Okay. I, I really like the last question. So I'm actually the most interested in how we divide, you know, how do we play, how the steward plays out his role in uh, joining all the different efforts. But that has been answered. So that was my main question. Um, otherwise, I can only say, yeah, I really I hope to, to meet you soon. Michael. Yes, likewise. Nice. Nice. I, I hope you're getting some sleep. <laughs> yeah, totally. I Don't worry about me, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm really good. Well, it sounds like Danny's sound is working again. Oh, yeah? Really? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting silenced. I'm actually on my phone now because I still haven't been able to get it to work on my laptop properly since last week. Um, 
But uh, just I just want to bounce back to Michael and just say it was really, really great to have that conversation with you yesterday. And I'm looking forward to more of that. I'm getting the prioritization of our issues and really understanding where the alignments are and how to use everyone's um, time and support and resources to the best um, effect for all directions is really great. Um, uh, getting those issues going, I, I, that was one thing I didn't say in the beginning is I've spent a ton of time going through all of the issues that are out there on the DAP right now, just to get my head around what is there um, and some new <coughs> categorizations that can help us prioritize is definitely something I'd like to help work on. Um, and I think you said that that was important too, Michael. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, so I have a question, Michael. Uh, yep. Have you looked at the uh, chatbot uh, issue? The have you seen issue? that one that I made? The, the, the chatbot, did you say? Chat, yeah, creating a chat every time a campaign is created. So I know uh, that, do you think that would be an option, uh, an issue that you'd be interested in stewarding? Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's a absolutely. Um, I think one of the things, though, is um, you know, I I still think that the. I mean, in fact, what's interesting about what you just said is like so. One of the things I've been looking at in the current DAP is the current workflow, and when I go through it and I you know do things like adding milestones and things, and when is it? kind of not make sense and trying to think about what background you actually need to have in order to even add a milestone. There's there's a lot of sort of um, ambiguities right now. <clears throat> and I think that some of that workflow stuff needs to be clarified. Um, but really, you know, what I'm thinking is trying to get that master roadmap in place. And that's really, I think everything kind of has to drive from that because I think we have to look at the bigger picture first and how what Wojtek and them are doing, what Jeff is doing, how we make sure that we stay focused on what we want to achieve in the six month period. And if that issue, you know, can fit into that and, and I'm sure we can make it fit it. I just want to make sure that it fits in in a, in a kind of structured way. And we know, okay, we may not be addressing that today. We might be addressing it in a week three, but it's part of that overall framework of where we're trying to arrive at. And that's what I really want to do, um, get that really structured. And I want to make sure that, so Jeff, while Jeff is doing his, we're talking constantly. Also, I'm going to be doing, um, specking out the, the kind of the project as well. So the specking it out, um, understanding what are the primary, one of the things I also want to do is consult people just to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what are the achievables in terms of what do we expect from, in terms of use, how do we expect it to, we, to be using it? And then the roadmap kind of frames all that. So we know in six months, this is where we're going to get at. And yeah, if, if that issue and other issues are going to come up and we just will have to see, is that an issue that fits into that or do we park it? And I don't want to be like, I don't want to be like put us in a box or anything, but I want to make sure that we have a, a real solid achievement that we can showcase. And, and one of the other things I, I, I didn't, mentioned in the roles, but I also think that um, this would be good, good to have a medium post about, you know, what it is we're doing around this, this stuff too. So we, if we get, get it out there and, and we might even get some feedback about it too. What do you mean this stuff? I mean the dalification of the DAP, just having some kind of um, blog post. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Chris is going to, love this like so I, I have another question yeah how are you gonna reel me in because i'm wild right so like oh, I you're always saying you're saying hey yeah that issue it might happen might not but guess what i have dean ready to go on it he's he's going to do it, it yeah. second he has three seconds right oh, it's gonna happen. that's okay that's okay and and it but but it doesn't it, it if it if it's an issue that's going to say add value to the overall project, that's okay. And if you've got somebody ready to go and and you want to like advance that, that 
that's that's totally fine. That's like a bonus in my mind. But as long as we like, we I just want to make sure we get all the core stuff done. That's like the main focus. And if you've got a, someone, you've got an issue, and you've got a resource to make that issue happen, fine. That's no problem. Okay. I don't want to. I like. I like. Uh, and I don't want anybody to not put issues in. Like I want the the issues coming. Keep sending them in. We want that. Cool. Well, if there's no more questions, then we can just go fireside chat. If anyone has any off topic things that they want to chat about, we got 10 minutes to hang. Anyone got any topics? Well, what is the fireside chat? It's just hanging out, chatting about good stuff. So has anybody watched Bitcoin Cash thing? Oh yeah, man. Have you? Do you, do you guys it's know about right now? Yeah, it's it's about to happen. Have you seen the website Cash dot um, Coin dot Dance? Yeah. Oh no! Looks like it's being uh, e dust. That's not good. Yeah, you know, the, the site is definitely working. Um, oh, it is? Yeah, I'll share a, it if you would like. I got a 504. Well, it looks like it's about to happen in two hours. I actually spent a lot of the morning trying to get a hold of my uh, my mom and my brothers because we, we have an old Bitcoin multi-sig that still has Bitcoin cash in it. And I was trying to, like figure out how do we get this Bitcoin cash out of this old Bitcoin multi thing and it's too much, it's too hard. I can't get people across the world that don't know how to do anything. It's the, the hard fork is in one block according to the website. If you, if you, uh, if you uh, look at my screen, I'm, I'm sharing it right now. Wow. Mm -hmm. I, I can't get close. Is there any, like, what's your take on any, of the, like, they succeeding, them succeeding with this attack? Well, it's very interesting, right? Like, the miners are pretty much all for Satoshi's vision, as they call it. Or what's it say that the support is for a uh, hash rate, right? It's a... Uh, oh, weird. Something percent. But yeah. all the... But most of the companies are using uh, Bitcoin ABC, right? Which is a different client because all the Segwit2x guys, Purse and BitPay and Roger Bear and all those guys, they are following the ABC roadmap. But Craig Wright somehow got the miners on his side. And so... Wait, yeah. what is this that's happening? So Bitcoin forks into Bitcoin Cash. And then had a few failed fork attempts in the Segwit 2x. And all the people who were trying to fork from Bitcoin fell on the Bitcoin cash stream, right? So, but then all those, then Craig Wright, who claims to be Satoshi, uh, also became part of Bitcoin cash. And then he kind of, I don't know, him and Roger Ver got in a fight. I don't know. Really, what happened? He sent a weird email, that's for sure. And everyone should check out that email. It's crazy. And then, uh, and now, he, they have different roadmaps about the direction they want to take uh, the technical roadmap for the clients. And, and so Bitcoin Cash is just forked, or it's forking right now. And did you see the Bitcoin hash power drop from 45 to 25 yesterday, which is massive. So some, it looks like some of the miners are moving over to Bitcoin Cash temporarily. I guess Craig Wright has gotten some of them to support his side or something. So it's it's in, that's that's like insane, like that that it dropped that much just in the in two hours. What's really interesting is that Craig Wright says he's going to attack the other network. <laughs> yeah. So. He says he's going to attack every proof proof of work chain, uh, which I guess would include Ethereum theoretically. But. <laughs> 
they have different mining. They have a mining algorithm, so you can't attack it with uh, with that mining power. I don't know. He's, and but he also he's also saying that there's some kind of uh, bug in the SegWit that will allow him to bring Bitcoin down to zero. But I don't know. Uh, I don't think that's how <laughs> the values work. <laughs> Is that why the price is crashing so much? The price is crashing partially because the hash power is dropping too. Yeah. Well, I, I can somebody please tell the world that, like, you know, decouple our our, our price from Bitcoin because those guys are all toxic, <laughs> and they're right. just bringing us down. Like, they're bringing everybody down with them, and it sucks, and I hate that. People need to smarten up. Yeah, I have a real hard time taking these guys seriously. Like, are they, I don't know, they just seem like immature, like reckless, like, like you American know, throwing around words and throwing around, like, at the, you know, aggression. And yeah, the whole industry is so connected right now. It's annoying that these, like, monkeys can, you know, liquidate how many trillions or hundreds of billions of dollars of value over their, like, petty. You know, I don't know. It just seems weird. But does anybody find that there's a bit of an irony here, which is that how is it possible that one tiny group of people are able to have such a giant impact on the entire crypto industry? That seems that is exactly what we don't want to have happen, right? I mean, it's really tough. Power law is just. It seems like a nature of humanity, right? Like there's always going to be the most influential people. In Ethereum, it's Vitalik and Vlad and, you know, Lubin and these guys. If they decide that everything sucks or whatever and they start getting in big public fights, yeah, there's going to be huge problems in Ethereum too. But in any, any organization, it's the CEOs of Coca-Cola. Um, maybe they're not trying to be decentralized, but... I don't know. I think it's going to be hard for us to somehow code away with power law dynamics. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I have a question. So uh, looking back at the, uh, the, uh, the, the coin dance page, it says that one minute ago, like, I guess the first block was mined and it's a 2.5 megabyte block. So did that have something to do with what the, 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 the new protocol was going to be or the new rules? No, because I think they can have a by blocks on both chains. Okay. I, I, I do it. One of them might have upped the block size. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. SV. So, so the irony is, the irony is Roger Ver split off from Bitcoin to up the block size. And now Craig Wright is fighting with Roger Ver because he wants to up the block size. So that leaves Roger Ver. <laughs> sort of in this strange situation where and then and then they're all three of them are saying they're all the three all three of them are saying they're the real Bitcoin. So it's kind of created a huge mess. <clears throat> Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's really crazy. Uh, the, I, from what I can tell the S V side is really centralized with a few miners that are into it and then like the mining pools big miners Craig Wright a few other random people but the bulk of Bitcoin cash humans are still on the ABC side so like if you look at the nodes the nodes is really interesting you know how many people are running Bitcoin SV nodes like very few <laughs> So what's uh, what's the difference between unlimited and ABC here? Uh, same as like parody and get. They're both following the ABC okay. roadmap. All right, I understand. But I, I mean, it looks like they all have this large block, right? So if only one of them increased the block size, right? Well, I guess it, it yeah, was just mined by an SV miner. I guess. I'm pretty sure that. Oh, and it's the same block? 
Oh no, you're right. I mean, well, it's it's the the value is reading is the same size, but it's true. Like as long as you mine the block, I guess the block can be uh, whatever it needs to be according to the constraints of that network. Maybe they're not showing the real size on some of those readings. It'll only fork when there is a difference of transactions or a different uh, one one group mines a block that is not compatible with the other groups. Uh, Rules. That's that's when the fork will happen. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure that there is no replay protection. Yeah, there's no replay protection. And um, so but. there, some they'll have to mine a block that's way bigger than Bitcoin ABC would accept, maybe, and then right, and then the actual fork will happen. Right. Right now, it's just possible right now people are creating both bitcoins i mean just like they, everyone was before right merge so, mind yeah exactly the merge mind and the the fork has happened but they'll stay together and stay uh, bitcoin <laughs> you're placing bets on this i'm sure they are <laughs> yeah Yeah, I get this 504 error when I go to the website. Oh, there we go. We're back. Well, anything else going on, guys? We can also call it last seven. I don't think I have anything else. I'm going to switch back to my camera. Cool. Well, then yeah. let's, let's check out. And, uh, you guys want to hang out and chat afterwards? I guess we still can, but um, I'll check out. Uh, thank you guys. Fun meeting. Glad to see a hard fork with you. That was a nice bonus. <laughs> um, welcome to the team, Jeff and Michael. I'm so excited to have you and start really pushing this stuff forward. Uh, I'll go lower left. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was nice to get that solidified. Um, I learned a little bit from this fireside chat. Um, yeah, thank you for clarifying that the rules meeting is next week, as I thought, because y'all had me in a little minor panic thinking I had the wrong date there for a minute. Um, and uh, welcome to the team, Michael and Jeff. It was really great getting to know you, Jeff, at DevCon, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the TCR work rolls out and um yeah i'm here and looking forward to settling into a little bit more of a routine with some of these meetings again and i'll pass it to uh don adams hey everybody welcome aboard jeff and michael uh very very much looking forward to seeing uh seeing what you guys do at giveth and uh yeah, I don't know. Uh, quite a lot going on, I guess. But uh, looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys next week over some uh, some vegetables that I'm chopping up. Uh, I will pass it to Bowen. Or did you start this? Uh, I, I haven't. Um, well, it is good to see everybody. Welcome aboard, Jeff and Michael. Um, uh, uh, I'm just going to check out with saying how excited I am that my new toy that I've been waiting for months and months and months of back ordering has arrived. So it's, it's kind of like the coolest little keyboard ever made. And if you're wondering what it is, I will tell you what it is afterwards. But uh, all that being said, uh, I will pass it to Kai. Kai, you go. Did you say Moog? It's, it's well, it's a Teenage Engineering OP1. I'm not that kind of a, I just recognized Moog <laughs> from all those nice bass lines. Um, yeah, so welcome, uh, Jeff and Michael. Um, awesome. Uh, I'm so happy the meeting is next week. I thought it was now. So uh, very cool on my evening schedule. Definitely works next week. For, um, yeah, so uh, thank you guys uh, for the updates. And I give it to the Godrepreneur again. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to take a look at these uh, bot 
issues on the on the DAP and see if I can maybe lend a hand. Yeah, there's lots of issues on there, man. You, you can just uh, cruise them, and a lot of them end up on Gitcoin. Just a, a heads up. So uh, if you do attack one, make sure to put a message there, and maybe we'll push it to Gitcoin to get some extra funding. Sweet. Thanks. Uh, who else needs to check out? Somebody. I can go. Uh, good meeting. Good uh, chatting with everybody. Um, have some pretty clear direction on next steps, and uh, I'm excited to dig into it on a sunny Thursday. And I will pass it to Michael. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Great meeting. Uh, really happy to be part of the team and uh, working with you all, and uh, really uh, excited to get uh, to get moving forward now. And uh, and I'll pass it over to uh, Lowy, I guess. Is it? Uh, I think you said Lo Lorelai, you went, right? Or she went, or Griff. I'll pass it back to you, Griff. I think that's everybody. Yeah. Jamie, did you go? Yep. Yep. Okay. Everyone went. And we have a four. ABC block. So, Ta -da. Uh, congratulations, guys. We have a third Bitcoin. <laughs> The Toshi's third child. Kai's only on one, but we'll see who wins in the end. Actually, I think we have like 50 or 100 Bitcoins, right? These are just the most known okay. ones. Sure. Bitcoin diamond, Bitcoin gold. <laughs> sure. That's that. Garbage. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, see you guys. Peace. Um, I'm hanging out.